This is the New West Super Slicer, and it is by far the most badass knife that I have recently added to my collection. And on top of being ridiculously badass, it's incredibly unique because of the wide serrations, but also the ever evolving angle change that happens with them along the blade. Now, I refuse to cut bread with this in this video, so if that's what you're here for, it's not gonna happen. This is not a bread knife, but this will destroy sourdough, and by destroy, I mean it in a good way. It'll slice the ever-living crap out of it in no time because of these amazing teeth that are on this knife. But I'm gonna use this with some meat and also some everyday prep, which is very odd for this type of knife. But the reality is, if you're going to invest in one of these limited edition, limited release, amazing knives, then you should want to put it to work as much as possible. So I'm going to dive into some of the geek out specs, and then we're going to put it to work with some meat and with some veggies and potatoes and uh, maybe even a banana. I mean, if you got to cut something up for your kids, like a banana, might as well use this. Okay, before I dive into the nuance of this knife, you should meet its inspiration and its foundation, which is the Chris Kidder Special 12-inch Chef's Knife slash Slicer. I've used this for everyday prep for the last couple of months. It's a fantastic 12-inch blade, almost 18 inches total. And this is basically what this has become. They, they, they took this knife and just made a monster out of it. And that's what the Super Slicer is. So if you're familiar with this, then this will fit quite nicely in your hands. If not, if you don't just get this one, at least get this one or get them both because I mean, oh God, they're just fucking awesome knives. Okay, let's focus on the blade. The steel is S35VN. What that means is that it is a hard steel that is made right here in the United States that undergoes a process called particle or powdered metallurgy. Basically, they take various types of metals, they blend them into a fine powder or grind them, I doubt they're putting them in their Vitamix, and then they combine them, basically taking the best qualities of each and their alloying elements, they mix them together, they homogenize them, and then they create the steel. So what this does is it creates a very uniform and fine microstructure. So with this, although it's a lower Rockwell hardness than say SG2 steel, which is like 63 Rockwell, which also goes through the powdered metallurgy process, this is around 58 to 60. So with that, you get the benefit of a really strong steel, you know, 60 Rockwell is pretty darn decent, but because of the powdered metallurgy process, you also have a blade that you can maintain and sharpen at home. But all that changes the second you add serrations to a blade. So you know about the steel, the chances are you're not gonna have to get this sharpened for two, three, five years probably. That's the reality of a knife like this. And when you do, I would call New West and ask them to take it in and sharpen it for you, whether that's a service they're gonna offer or not. With this type of blade, I think they should, so there's that. Now, moving down to the base of the blade, there is no bolster. This goes straight down into the handle, so it is full tang. However, at the pinch grip right here, there is a little bit of a groove that you can feel that kind of just gives you a guide and a little bit of like a speed bump for your fingers not to slide around so you can get a really nice solid grip with this knife when you're at the pinch grip. Now the knife is full tang. You can see that the blade goes all the way down from the tip to the butt of the knife. So that full tang handle basically creates a really nice balance for a knife. As you can see right here at the pinch grip, just move around a little bit. I've got a really even bounce. Now, anytime I talk about balance with a knife, I have to say that the balance of a knife does not determine whether it's good or bad. It has to do with personal preference. It has to do with what you're using the knife 
for and how you're using the knife. I have plenty of blade heavy and then plenty of handle heavy and plenty of really nicely balanced knives like this. But I must say, when you are dealing with an 18 inch knife, a 12 inch blade, having a really nice balance at the pinch grip where you're holding onto this, it does make a big difference. And with that pinch grip and that balance, you also have a rounded off spine. So it's very comfortable with the pinch grip and with the balance. Now the handle is made from desert ironwood, which is basically a tree that was put here on earth to be turned into knife handles. It's just incredibly durable, it's fantastic. It's not going to warp and swell and all that compared to other woods. That doesn't mean leave this soaking in the sink, never do that, never put it in the dishwasher, hand wash this only, but it's just an incredibly durable knife. The Handle is held on with two brass rivets and then there is a nice little mosaic inlay pin in the center as well. All right, let's talk about these unbelievable serrations. What I want you to visualize is the sun setting and you can see all the rays coming off of the horizon at different angles. That is basically what's happening with this knife. Imagine the sun is setting right here the way the serrations are in the center are pretty much dead straight up. When you get to the front of the knife, they start to angle out this way at a harder angle. And when you get to the heel of the knife, they start to angle backwards. What this will do is allow you to get even more grip, essentially, into the product that you're cutting when you're pushing forward. And since those serrations are facing that direction, you're going to get assistance from them basically. So you're gonna push forward with the serrations going this way. And then when you come back to the center, they'll be dead on. And then when you get down in the product, especially for a real crusty bread, I'm not gonna cut bread, we already established that. But when you get down to the base here, the serrations are backwards. So for most knives where you kind of have to saw a little bit depending on the length and that's one of the benefits of having a really long knife even for a regular straight edge like the chris kidder knife but what this does is if you're cutting anything you're going to go forward and you come back you get teeth and aggression at the first push and then when you pull back you get even more at the heel. It's an incredible design and evidently they created or invented the process or the machine that allows this to happen. It's just so incredibly unique. I've never seen anything like this. I have, I don't know, about 250 knives in my collection. You're just seeing a very small amount of them here and this is definitely a one of a kind. And with all the research I've done on knives, I've never seen anything like this either. So it's just a special, special knife. As I said, this is a limited release. I have number 26 of 75. And as a disclaimer for these videos, because influencers have to do this now, yes, New West sent me this. There was no exchange of money or anything like that. They asked me for my honest review and that's what I'm doing. Last thing about the edge of the knife. Are these serrations or scallops? Well, some brands call all knives that have any bit of wiggle to the blade scalloped. Some call them serrated. Some call anything that has a point like these do serrated while scallops have to be smooth and wavy to each their own. I don't care what you call it. But what I don't want you to think of this as is a bread knife. So call it serrated, call it scalloped. Either way, this is a slicer. In fact, it's a super slicer because that's the name. Okay, let's dive in with, aside from bread, we've established that. Here's the deal, I don't make sourdough. I live in the middle of nowhere. No one had any good sourdough, so I'm using that as my excuse for the fact that I'm not cutting bread. Anyway, let's cut up a tomato. Here's something that you're gonna have to also get used to with this knife is that it is a single bevel. So with a single bevel knife, basically this side, because this is a right-handed single bevel, the left side is straight down and then the edge is created on one side. It's not like most of the other, I think all of the other New S knives that are double bevel. So you got a 50-50 even grind on each side of the blade. With that, what you'll find sometimes is like, so I'm right-handed, sometimes the knife wants to come on an angle and it's because these are meant for slicing originally, the single bevel, especially with fish and sushi and a lot of that that was just very traditional with Japan. Using the knife on an angle, that 
single bevel was really helpful. Now, when you're using it straight up and down, you'll find that if you go straight down with it, which you can with this knife, it's gonna pull in a little bit. And it's not you, it's not the knife, it's the combination of those things. You just gotta get used to it. But what you will find is that when you are doing this in a slicing motion, that you will have a very nice straight down even cut. But the second you start to just kind of push like that, I could tell already that it started to get off on a little bit of an angle. It just feels good. Now, slicing a tomato, a lot of serrated knives can do that. No big deal. However, this is just effortless, which is awesome. But here's the deal. I want to be able to use this knife more than just slicing something. And what I don't want you to forget about is the fact that you have about an inch of a single bevel straight tip here. So if you want to be able to use this to now slice these up like this for salsa, go for it. There's your small dice. You can stack a few of these. You've got that nice grip if you need it, but use the tip of the knife to, I don't know, just be able to use the knife more. That's, that's really all I'm trying to encourage you to do here is if you're gonna invest in something like this and get a limited release type of knife, then just put it to work. And before I make too much of a mess here, the knife does come with a leather sheath, which covers the entire blade. Nothing sticks out. It is nice and snug, so you can have this for your kit. I love making slaw, and I'm usually using a straight edge knife. Now with this, if I give it a good push, See how that brought me down on an angle there? It's just honestly because it's the single bevel. It's not something I use all the time and I'm not 100% used to it, but it's because I was pushing there. Now watch what happens when I just pull on this instead. There's something about that type of motion. And then once you get in and pull back, the knife just wants to flow. Here's the deal. What I'm doing here by showing you this knife being used in ways that it necessarily wasn't completely intended for is just enjoying the challenge for me personally, I think being able to take a knife like this and just push it to the limits and use it for the things that, again, it's just not intended for, it's fun. But also, again, if you're going to invest in something like this and you get such a unique blade, you're going to want to use it. I'm telling you, you're definitely going to want to use it. So the other night I'm making tacos from start to finish with this knife. And that's what really prompted me to push the limits with this. And what I was thinking about is how ridiculous would it be to do the rock chop with this knife? But then because of the way the serrations angle backwards, it's like, well, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens here. In order for this to really work, you gotta kind of exaggerate your push forward so that you can get a little bit of a slice action going. But you can see that with this 12 inch super slicer scallop serrated monster of a fucking badass knife, you can even do the European style rock chop and get your scallions nice and fine. All right, so your kid wants a banana slice. Well, you know what? Just, I don't know. How do we want to do this? Let's just, uh, here, let's do this. Let's get weird with it. Uh-oh. All right, well, I broke those, but, uh, and that one. You want to cut up your avocado. Okay, this is a terrible example. 
all right, maybe this is one of the things that you just shouldn't do unless you have a less ripe banana. Hmm. All right, so your kid's happy with the banana. Now you want to prep some taters. I love these little mini bell peppers. They're fantastic. And remembering the tip. You've got it, so use it. If you're prepping a meal and you're like, you know what, I could get away with using this knife, just go for it, dude. And do that's just just have at it. Grab a spoon or a teaspoon, pop those out, easy breezy. Now, if you really want to be a menace, the next time that you have friends over for some cocktails and you need some lemons, don't prep it ahead of time. Wait till they're over and just pop this thing out. I'm telling you, they will lose their minds. In fact, ladies, you pull this out and start cutting lemons, your girlfriend's husbands are definitely going to be drooling all over you. And for the dudes out there, uh, it's just instant badassery. That's it. You're badass. That's what this knife can do. And last but not least, I've got a little roast that I heavily, heavily peppered. I brought this to an internal temp of 127. It's been resting for about 20 minutes. So let's hope that I didn't overcook it. Where are you going? Over here. Oh boy. Mm. I'm excited for this. I'm feeling more and more confident with the single bevel. And so I don't cut myself. We're going to leave that right there. So yeah, I mean, looks pretty darn good to me. Well, there you have it, folks. This is the New West Knife Works. Limited edition. Only 75 are being made. But I must say, if they do sell out before you get one, commenting, messaging them, liking the post, the whole nine, the more traction this gets, this might be something that they run again. Also, it could be something that if it becomes really popular, it just ends up to be a staple in their lineup. So my final thoughts, this knife is just completely fucking badass. I absolutely love it. The single bevel is something that I personally just got to get a little bit more used to, but I'm trying to use this knife in ways that it's not necessarily intended for. But when it came to slicing the meat and even slicing that lemon or the tomato and using this how it should be as a slicer, it's really easy, but I want to push this to the limits. And the only thing that I could maybe hope for in the future, if it's even possible, is a double bevel version of this, which I would give a 12 out of 10 as a review number. This one gets an 11 out of 10, so it's still pretty good. Anyway, I'm Chef Brandon. This is the Super Slicer, and it's awesome.